Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Atlas. In today's video, we're going to keep it very brief. It is a Sunday and we are just kind of seeing how everything's going to take place more or less tomorrow. But I do want to give you guys a little bit of an update here and take a look at the charts as well. If you guys are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe for more cryptocurrency technical analysis and news. And if you guys can, please make sure you hit that thumbs up like button. We are trying to get to at least 50 likes on this video and it definitely helps us out. The bell notification so that way then you guys know when we have new videos. Going into this, we're talking about Bitcoin, Orchid, as well as Augur today, once again with Augur because some interesting points with that. Starting with the news, and we're going to have a little bit on Ethereum too. So again, this is very, very brief, even more brief than yesterday. Bitcoin miners saw a 48% increase in revenue in November. So very good for news for them, right? Bitcoin miners generated an estimated $522 million in revenue in November, up 48% from October. A 48%. That's absolutely amazing. Just over the course of one month. According to on-chain data from CoinMetrics analyzed by Coindesk. Furthermore, network fees brought in $54.9 million in November, or nearly 11% total revenue. A slight percentage decrease from the 12.2% of revenue represented by fees in October. Fees steadily declined through November, coming down from the roughly two-year highs in late October, dropping from a $13 average transaction fee at the start of November to below $3 near month's end per coin metrics. Obviously, if you're doing transfer of Bitcoin, you don't want to be paying these super outrageous high prices in transfer fees, right? So that is absolutely great that it dropped down so significantly. Taking advantage of the revenue increase, miners are bringing more and more machines online after early November's record difficulty drop, with the past two adjustments resulting in difficulty increases and a third consecutive increase projected for mid-December, meaning an increase in resources required to mine than at a lower difficulty level. <clears throat> As analysts predict Bitcoin's current rally is sustainable with the strong possibility of continued upward price movement, miners are uh, mine, rah, miners eye continued revenue growth through the end of 2020. I don't know why I had so much trouble trying to say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up, Ethereum. Ethereum fund is to debut on the Toronto Stock Exchange. This is actually some pretty cool news. This came out yesterday, but it was a little bit after I had already done my video. So I wanted to go ahead and include this in for you guys today. And so next week, Canadian digital asset investment manager 3IQ will be launching an IPO of an Ethereum exchange traded trust, the Ether Fund, on the Toronto Stock Exchange TSX under the ticker e QETH.U. The maximum offering for the launch is $100 million, and the closing date of the offering will be no later than December 10th, 2020. 3IQ counts more than $400 million, Canadian dollars, under management and maintains a focus on Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Those three. I think this is absolutely great news. We're still waiting for some good news in the United States about an ETF, especially with Bitcoin. And it's been talked about for a long time that if you can do something like that, for the United States especially, it's going to be extremely bullish. A lot of people are going to go into that. A lot of people look to these ETFs as a way for uh, security as a form of retirement. The only real big drawback with this is that you don't own the asset that you're getting the ETF on. But some people feel that it's a little bit more secure of mind going into something like that. But hey, you know, the way I look at it, if you don't own it yourself, then you don't really own it. So, you know, a lot of traders and investors and everyday people they might be really a, a pulled towards something like this and it is still bullish for the market overall but me personally i'd rather just actually own the asset okay now let's go take a look at the charts again like i said today is going to be a very quick video guys looking at bitcoin the previous day we had another daily gain which is absolutely great we had a previous big drop that took place on december 4th and you can see that people have been fighting back, essentially pushing back to the point right where that first drop had started, uh, right on that tip of that wick right there, $19,445, $450, right around the same range, as you guys can tell. And same thing with the new daily candle, which has been now out for about an hour. We touched right around the same range, $19,450, and then it bounced off. And now it is on a slight decline but it is also trying to recover just a little bit. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. And so yesterday's movement saw a, quite a substantial drop, but the pullback itself had recovered tremendously so. 
uh, at one point dropping down to eighteen thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars. So a lot of movement taking place there, but the volume itself overall is still very low. As you guys can see here, the largest candles that we've had recently, um, according to these records, are from December 1st. December 1st was a large red candle. Then we saw two greens as forms of recovery, another larger red candle in formation, and then several greens. If this red is to form higher in the daily volume, it would be following essentially this one day, two day pattern, one day, two day pattern. But this isn't a substantial form of reference, just to keep in mind, as you can see here, you had a large red candle followed by a red, two more greens down, and then a large green candle recovery up. And that green candle that you see is quite substantial. For example, this volume back on November 27th, it moved a lot in both directions, but when it ended up being the end of the day, almost nothing had changed. So the overall spectrum of the day sure was volatile, but the end of the day, it was as if nothing had changed. And so then on this daily green candle on November 30th, not only was it more volume, but it was essentially only positive. It was all green and just a little bit of red. And then you saw people taking the red and selling it on the next day. So it's gonna be very interesting going in on the new weekday as to how the market's going to react with this. Starting to see a little bit of some green action movement. Overall, a lot of this rally started to take place pretty late here towards the closing time for the Sunday. So I think people are starting to get a little bit excited. Some momentum is starting to build. And if this was to have a further drop down, that 21 EMA, $18,270 is a key level, a key level of support that's being established. And that 21 EMA is something that should be on everyone's radar whenever you take a look at these kinds of things. That's a substantial drop if that was to take place. So do keep that in mind. And if you take a look up here at the top, we still need to break above that 19,000, well, 20,000. Essentially, we got to get $20,100. $20,100 will make it unanimous across all the exchanges that that is officially a new all time high. I am a little bit concerned that we might just briefly break above that and then people will start taking their profits and selling off once again causing another push back down for it to have a strong rally f throughout the rest of this year because we are in December and we're already a week into December so we got about three weeks left it's looking tougher and tougher to try and get a significant rally and then using that previous all-time high as a new level of support rather than a level of resistance and that's one of the key things right is we want to establish a new level of support above the previous high to really strengthen the idea that this is an asset that is continuing to grow. Do keep in mind compared to 2017, 2018 period, that there was less Bitcoin that was out there. So it's easier for the price to go up and down. Um, however, there was also a lot less demand. So most of the people that were getting involved in that um, was from essentially a retail side and it was mostly from over an Asian side. So over now, what we're seeing is kind of the inverse, more of the major institutions, and so a lot of the hype isn't quite there yet from the regular retailer uh, perspective, and once they start feeding in with this, even further with the FOMO, then, oh yeah, we're, we're talking some, some good movement here. So PayPal, Cash App, things like that are making it more accessible now that you have the ability to access it. Now it's more about the word of mouth, being like, what, how do I buy Bitcoin? Oh, uh, oh, I can just go on PayPal? I just buy it that way? Oh, okay, let me just go do that. I've already got a PayPal. You don't have to go through and sign up for Coinbase and wait for the exchange to crash like it does every single time, it seems like, and all that magical goodness, right? Okay, moving on. On to the next coin, on to Orchid. Let's see how you're doing, Orchid. Well, not too great. Last two days, we had actually pretty much four days in a row, five days in a row. Uh, large push up, massive retreatment down. Pump and dump, and massive pump and dump, and then even more massive, massive pump, massive, massive dump. And the next day, same exact thing. I'm getting sick and tired of all these pump and dumps that pe keep uh, people keep doing but it can only go on for so long until finally it's going to explode. Today is December 6th. One of the key things, we're gonna go take a look here actually in a second. I wanna see if they've updated their website for this or not, is about how much more the tokens have been released. 
The good news is that even though this was highly volatile from the previous two days, the level of volume in comparison to the green candle that took place on December 4th is still significantly less. So we do have an upturn to be expected and swapping into another direction point of view. And we see typically two to three days of decline off of the high level of volume. So I would expect moving into Monday, this being a larger candle of volume um, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have a huge price movement like you guys can see here, but the volatility of it could be absolutely huge. And there was new talks about a new exchange about this being introduced into as well. And I'll see if I can find the information for you guys with that. Just real quick, taking a look at this, if it has a decline back down to the 21 EMA, that is at 0 0.2860. We need to stay above that 21 EMA to still be bullish. Further continuation up above this consolidated zone, this rectangle that I've set up before, I feel this is a strong section that really needs to be broken above and closed above and established for two to three days at least. And given ORCID's history, three days is really much more preferred to have that strong indication that a rally is pushing. And that's at 0.3228. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go take a look at the ORCID. OXT news on their website and see if they have updated about their release information which they tend to update here so we take a look at the supply the supply is still labeled at 440 million I, I think it was 440 I know it was 400 and something here but you can see that the post December 6th label right down here identifies 7,311,021 orchid well it is officially December 6th. I guess tomorrow is technically post December 6th. So I don't know if something's gonna happen tomorrow or not. I mentioned this before. I wanna keep an eye on it and just see if they're planning on releasing little bits. Somebody had labeled earlier, I saw over on Twitter. Um, I, I Honestly, I forgot about these things to try and have it prepared when I started the video. So I do apologize about that. But we're gonna go take a look and see what people are saying on Twitter. So if I can get some of this information for you guys. But long story short, they were showing that there was some order stuff going on. Okay, OXT. And taking a look at this. Scrolling on down here. Okay. Let's go take a look at the latest and see what they're saying. All right. Holding a small bag. People got their holdings going on. Uh, one of these people here, that's about an hour ago, should be seeing some information coming up on what the other exchanges that they're getting ready to release on. And I'm just taking a look for you guys with that right now. All right. This guy tweets about Orchid all day, all night. Johnny One Punch Man, DR6 AM. I wonder if he uh, watches these videos or not. Okay, Indodax, there we go. That's the name of the, the exchange that Orchid's gonna be coming out on. Um, or it, I guess it might be actually out on this now. Let's take a look here on deposit starts from December 7th, so that's tomorrow. Trading starts from December 8th. There you go, the day after tomorrow. And it says Orchid is ranked number 95 of 7,857 different cryptocurrencies. That's a lot of cryptocurrencies, guys. That's absolutely crazy right there. And uh, let's see, does somebody have that information of that amount? I saw it at one point. Anyways, so long story short, can't seem to find it at the moment, but it was a like 1,000, or sorry, 1 million something order. Aha, here we go. I was able to find it. Look at that. 1,137,569 Orchid is being listed, trying to sell it at 0 0.3105. And so this person, King of Rigo, I think is how you say it, he said, C could it be the MM is ready to pump OXT? Very curious indeed. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, now moving on. Over to Augur, aka Rep. It had another really nice day it was not a pump and dump type situation uh, for the most part right we did have a massive climb up a lot of sell-off that took place i talked about this in the previous video this was over a 50 percent retracement on that actual candle and so the next day I, i'm not surprised that it actually had some green movement i am surprised it had so much green movement that took place up 
a lot of retracement back down. We are seeing a little bit of the red at the moment, but we were seeing that with the other cryptocurrencies as well. So this is having some strong recovery. Two days of absolutely massive levels of volume in comparison to the others. So this one might cool down a little bit today going into Monday throughout the rest of the course of that daily candle as people start to allocate their funds towards other projects. I would still be cautious with this because of how explosive these green candles were and it tends to, you know, ride the elevator, uh, sorry, ride the stairs up and then you ride the elevator down, right? So if it's going to hit down hard to fill these kinds of things, it, it could be pretty bad. But I do like this movement going up. It is still on a bullish side. As long as it stays above the 21 EMA, I'm still feeling positive with it. And I use that as a strong fundamental indicator, $16.94, guys. So as long as it's above $17, you should still be fine on the daily candle with that. If you're concerned with anything, taking a stop loss, setting up a position right around at the $18 range because we have two points of reference here. Well, technically, there's one establishment right there, but it's right around in that range. There's just a slight little gap that's taking place with that bottom on the $18.25 range as of December 6th. Uh, the, or, well, today's now. Well, yeah, when you're watching, anyways, that we just started the new daily candle. So you get my point, the last 24 hour type period. You gotta love how like, you gotta be so specific with these times on the UTC side. Anyways, so yeah guys, uh, keep an eye out on that. And I would say if it breaks above this level of $23 yet again, then that push up to around 23.67 looks a lot more promising. It does still need to try and break that from a psychological standpoint. And that is not actually just a psychological standpoint. You can even date back here to August 29th, as well as on August 26th. And you can even see further back to around August 4th that this is a very key position overall to try and break above. So we're gonna just gonna go ahead and set that right there and hopefully this does save that. So $23.57. If it can break above that, then it's looking like it's gonna have the opportunity to go back to previous highs. That's gonna go ahead and do it for this video, guys. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this, please don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up like button. We are trying to get to at least 50 likes on this video. It is greatly appreciated. Click that bell notification so you can be alerted of videos in the future as well. And let us know in the comments down below what you thought about everything said today. And I will see you guys in the next episode.